Uh, my name is Rita Lopidia. I am from South Sudan and the executive director of EFO Organization for Women Development and really happy to be here. Now that we have a country, uh, we thought that all the challenges that women went through, the difficulties, the displacement, no opportunities for women, uh, the violence of the conflict on women, all these things, we thought once we have our country, now things are going to improve and all of us were in to ensure that we build a better country. Little did we know that it is a beginning of another type of a conflict. Two years down the lane after independence, uh, there was leadership struggle in the country and conflict broke out again. And being so passionate about a country that we have for so long been waiting for, we thought, no, this is not happening. So what can we do as women? And if organization being there on the forefront, really pushing for issues of women, peace and, and security, using the 1325 agenda, we found ourselves on the forefront and we keep on receiving calls. Hey, what are we supposed to do? What can we do? Can we call out the parties uh, to stop? Can we say something? We realize that as an organization, it's not enough. We need to open up the space to ensure more women came up. And that is how the South Sudan Women's Coalition uh, was formed. And um, they participated in the peace process. We advocated, we see the space open, more women uh, in the peace process. And if you look into the South Sudan uh, Revitalized Peace Agreement, there are a lot of uh, gender components in the peace agreement. We have a vice president, that is a woman. We have the minister of defense, that is a woman. We have the speaker in the parliament, is a female. We have a deputy speaker in the uh, council of states, is a woman. So it opened up the space for women to also hold these key positions, which has never been occupied by women. Right now, the process is still going on uh, to have the second national action plan on UN Security Council Resolution 1325. I would say our experience with the first NAP uh, was bittersweet because by the time the NAP was launched, uh, the country went into conflict right after that. But we still used that NAP to open up the space because it is a legitimate document um, that is passed by the government. So even during the peace process, we use the NAP that women should be able to participate. And I think it worked out. Because our organization's focus is really on women, and uh, my, myself and my colleagues, we, we discuss and we, th we thought, okay, um, there have been actually a number of men that supported our initiative. And they are strong advocates for women issues. And we also realized that during the peace process, some of the information and some of the advices uh, we actually got from other men. And uh, we noted that they are men who are good allies for women. So we came up with this Adam's initiative and Adam is just like the first humans, Adam and Eve. So we thought we'll name our group Adam that will work with men and raise their awareness on issues uh, that are happening to women. So this initiative, we have launched it in three states uh, in South Sudan. Uh, that is uh, Eastern Equatoria, where we have a lot of challenges of uh, the girl-child marriage, and we have the girl-child compensation, uh, which is when uh, a murder happens in a family that will take a girl-child to compensate for that murder. 
Um, so we have been working in that state with community leaders, and we establish Adam Group in, uh, in, in Eastern Equatoria. Recently, we had a conversation with them, and they are doing amazing work in the community, uh, raising the awareness um, of young uh, men uh, on why it is very important to to fight some of the social norms that actually puts women down. The second one is established in, in Central Equatoria and one in Western Bargazal. So we hope that we work closely with men that will promote the interests of women and um, take inclusivity as important.